boom, isosceles triangle, and these are the two little legs doing the can-can, evidently. Everything is a shape, at least, I, I think so anyway, at least every like physical thing is a shape, I suppose, but shapes are one of those things we were taught about at a really young age at school. From simple ones as little kids to all kinds of triangles we are taught about for some reason in maths class when we get older. Yet, despite how much we are taught about shapes, we don't really talk about their names. I never remember being taught why a circle is called that, or why four-sided shapes have so many different names. So why don't we make up for this lack of collected knowledge in all our lives and look into how shapes got their names. And for this video, I'm just looking into 2D shapes. 3D shapes are way above my payroll, and 4D shapes, oh, forget about it. I'm not, I'm not touching that whole can of worms. And I need to mention the more fancy word for a shape as well, that being a polygon. This comes from the Greek word of poly, meaning many, and agonia, meaning angle. A polygon, however, technically needs to have three sides or more, and the first shape we are looking into doesn't actually fit the bill, as it has just one side, or maybe no sides at all, depending on who you ask. I'm of course talking about a circle. This is a word that has been linked with round things for a really long time. It comes from the Latin circulus, meaning things like small ring or hoop, and that's why we see it in things like a circus, which comes from circle, because they're like a ring shape, and circus also means like a round about as well. That's why we have things like Piccadilly Circus in London, which isn't an actual circus with elephants and people walking tight roads and stuff like that. Maybe even more interesting if it was, but unfortunately it's just a big billboard basically. Another one slash zero sided shape is the oval, which is like a circle but a bit more stretched out. Oval actually comes from Latin as well with their word of ovum, which means egg, and that makes a ton of sense. I never really noticed this, but this is a really obvious one because ovals are pretty egg-shaped, I suppose. What about a two-sided shape? This kind of thing does and doesn't exist. The only way we can make one of these is if one of those sides are curved, and some people don't see curves as a true line. This is why some people don't think circles have uh, any lines at all. They think they have no lines because they're just completely curved. I'm personally in camp curve are lines. I'm sure that's angering a lot of anti-curve nerds, but we'll manage. But anyway, perhaps the most popular kind of two-sided shape, if we count curves as a line, is a semicircle. Semi simply means half in Latin, and we use it in other contexts too, when talking about something being half of something else. There is, however, actually a more fancy word for a two-sided shape too, that being a digon. This is simply a combo of the Greek di, meaning two, and once again gone, like we see in polygon. Slight spoiler, but words ending with gone are going to be popping up quite a bit later down the line in this video. Before we continue, I want to say a huge thank to my most recent patrons. So a huge thank to the new patrons, The Supreme Extreme and Jerome. Patron is the best way to financially support Name Explain, and donating just $1 a month gets you ad-free videos, a chance to say what names they'll explain, an exclusive monthly newsletter, and your name at the end of these videos. All of that can be found at Patreon com forward slash name explain which will be linked down below conversely if you want to just make a one-time donation you can leave a super thanks directly in the comment section of any of my videos here on youtube they help out tremendously too thank you Things really start to pick up when we look at three-sided shapes. We're finally at actual true polygons. We made it their team. A three-sided shape is, of course, called a triangle. This name is pretty easy to understand. Tri means three, as we see in many other cases, like with tricycles, and angle because, well, they, they have three angles. While that's pretty easy to explain, things get a little bit more complex when we look at different kinds of triangles. You know, the ones you were taught about at school for no reason. If you haven't guessed from my anti-triangle thing, I'm, I wasn't a fan of maths at school as a kid. I, I, I hated learning about all these damn triangles. And I'm, I, sometimes I think to myself, I'm so happy I don't have to do a maths class anymore. I'd just be like driving around or going out for a walk and be like, huh. I never have to attend a maths class in my life again, and that makes me happy. In school, we get taught about things like the equilateral triangle. These are when all three sides of the triangle are equal in length, and that's where the equal part of the word equilateral comes from, with the latter lateral part coming from the word of lateral, which is a term we use when talking about the sides of things. My favourite name for a triangle has to be the isosceles triangle. This is when a triangle only has two sides of equal length. This word comes from two Greek words, 
isos meaning equal and skelo meaning legs. I guess this comes from the idea that the two equal sides of one of these triangles looks kind of like two legs doing like a weird spread like power pose or something like that. Imagine someone standing like that and then like they got a little bit, maybe more like that I guess. If it was like that, that would be equal. Look at me teaching your maths. More like that, line there, boom, isosceles triangle, and these are the two little legs doing the can-can evidently. Let's carry on. Then we have the scalene triangle. This is when none of the sides are the same length. This too comes from Greek with their word of skalenios, meaning unequal or uneven, which makes sense. And there are other kinds of triangles out there like acute and obtuse triangles that relate more to the angles, but we, we don't need to spend any more time on triangles right now. This is because we have a boatload of four-sided shape names to cover. Seriously, there are so many names for these guys. Technically, the overarching term for a four-sided shape is actually quadrilateral. This comes from quad, meaning four, and lateral once again referring to sides. Perhaps the most well-known kind of quadrilateral is the square. This is when all sides of equal length and all four angles are a neat 90 degrees. Square is a really old, odd word, with its true origins pretty much being unknown. It seemingly roots back to the Proto-Indo-European quatuor, meaning four, due to the four sides and four angles, I suppose. A rectangle is another kind of quadrilateral, which have just opposite sides of equal length. The first part of this name comes from the Latin rectus, meaning right, and angle once again relating to the angles of this thing. Why this shape is all about the right, as in the right hand side, I don't know, that's, that's just where the name comes from though, but they are also known as oblongs too, with oblong too coming from a Latin word oblongus, meaning more long than broad. And you know, oblong is just a really fun word to say. Oblong, I like that one. A rhombus has equal sides with its opposite sides being a parallel. They're normally kind of diamond shape. The name means something along the lines of something that spins around in Greek and it has links to magical wheels used by sorcerers. I, I couldn't find why this link was thing. I just imagine like a diamond spinning around that being all cool, blowing the brains of ancient Greek sorcerers if they actually existed. Maybe they did, who knows. But I guess just some people found this shape to be pretty magical or something. A parallelogram is a four-sided shape where all opposite sides are parallel and equal. Normally, however, the angles aren't a perfect 90 degrees. The parallel part of this name comes from the whole parallel aspect of these shapes, and the gram part comes from Greek once again meaning to write, I guess could write or draw out these shapes. Then we have the trapezoid, which only has two sides which are parallel. This comes from Greek too, and weirdly means table-shaped. I have no idea what kind of tables Greeks were sitting around, but not very comfy ones I imagine from the look of this shape. Things get a little easier to talk about once we get past four-sided shapes, as all these kinds of shapes are formed from the Greek word for the number of sides they have and have the gon suffix at the end like we've already covered, like a pentagon with five sides, a hexagon with six sides, a heptagon with seven sides, an octagon with eight sides, a nonagon with nine sides, and a decagon with ten sides. And we could go on like this, there's a hundred-sided shape, I can't remember what it's called, but they're all, all further names just basically is number gone. Number gone, that sounds like a fun thing. It sounds like number wang from that Mitchell and Webb look. Gosh, a number wang reference. Who saw that coming? That wasn't in the script. I just, it just came out of my brain. And beyond this, we have shaped names that reflect something specific they look like, like pear-shaped, which looks like a pear, heart-shaped that looks like a love heart, kite-shaped that looks like kites, and star-shaped as they look like stars. Or at least people thought that's what stars look like anyway. And the same goes for the heart shape, I suppose, because hearts don't actually look like that. They're much more gross and gooey. Like I said, everything is a shape. And while I've covered a lot of shapes here, this is far from all of them. Let me know about any other interesting shape names I might have missed out on. Also, please suggest a topic down below which we could cover in next Monday's Name Explained video. It could be about literally anything and the topic can be as niche or broad as you like. I will then choose three of those topics and place them in a poll exclusively for my patrons to vote on. Then the winner from that poll will be the topic covered in next Monday's Name Explained video. You can vote in that poll as well as enjoy many other great benefits by visiting patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below, and by donating just $1 a month. Thank you. 
Anyway, that's more than enough for myself, but don't forget to go follow me on Instagram where I'm name explain YT. And don't forget to go join the Facebook page, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Okay, all, take care. Should we get on with this? I've got my extension cord back, so that's exciting. Hopefully the lighting should be good. Let's go. 3D shapes are way above my payroll. Payroll, that came out weird. That was a massive tangent, but what? Two-sided shape. This, not my word. If we do town, cut, town, ta, ta, ba. Let's do that again. We could just use the term semi. No, so I'm gonna, again, I really shouldn't be talking about semis in these videos, Amber, sorry. Two equal size, look of the, so again. Is a spiral a shape? I wonder if I should have talked about spirals. Got there, cool.